Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to From the Depths version 2.5.0.7, The Stable Branch. And the hilarious thing about uh, this update is that yesterday, well it was yesterday for me, uh, might be different for you depending on the time zone you're in, uh, I uploaded my video which is which was about this update in dev test, and uh, not a few hours after I uploaded that video, the devs decided to move the update to stable. And, well, so here we are now, covering the things that I missed. And also acknowledging that, uh, the big update has landed. Batten down the hatches, uh, nail crooked pieces of wood over your windows, uh, hide under the covers for the big APS updaters here. But we're not going to be talking about that for the most part, because we've I've kind of already covered that in previous videos. So we're going to be focusing on other things. So, what have we covered before? We have covered... In the last video, we covered God Mode, which is awesome. We covered, uh, in brief, the changes to APS. Basically, more damage, uh, slower fire rate. You need to consider more things when building them. Recoil, cooling, and autoloaders. Uh, new sounds, new guns and missile sounds, which sound awesome. And the 1 meter by 1 meter custom jets, which is really cool and fun. I even got a hint uh, from some people on how to properly use those, so thank you for that. And today we're going to be covering the things I completely forgot about, and which uh, the patch notes for this update handily reminded me of. Starting with uh, missiles, specifically heat missiles. Now this is a pretty straightforward little feature, because uh, missiles, despite the fact they do so much damage, they tend to struggle against uh, heavily armored targets, I find. If they hit something that's exposed, like I don't know, an exposed mantlet or detection systems or something like that, then they're really dangerous. But, you know what, so I I did kind of feel that uh, missiles needed at least a little bit of armor busting potential, and so here it is. So, very simple, shake charge head, uh, uses all immediately connected explosive warheads to blast a stream of superheated armor piercing copper into the target, pretty much just like the advanced cannon uh, uh, shell head does. And so it uses that. You can't modify uh, how much how much of the explosive warhead is used. It just uses all of it all the time. And you can't modify the... You could, there's no slider for penetration metrics. So this is a small missile we're looking at right now. Uh, just uh, eight sections of it. And the you'll see over here we have medium and large missiles. Also eight sections just for consistency. So... These things, I was worried when I first heard about heat missiles and thinking, oh goodness me, this is going to be really overpowered. Uh, so far, in about 10 minutes of testing I've been doing, it doesn't seem that overpowered. It's really, really good against uh, craft which don't have decent missile defense and which have, uh, which are quite compact, don't have air gaps or have very volatile components in them. So things like the paddle gunner, the trebuchet, uh, stuff like that. So. Yeah, these are very good for that. They do struggle in finishing things off once they've uh, blown up certain bits. But yeah, the damage is pretty reasonable, so these little missiles aren't that powerful. Uh, penetration metric of 12.8, which is pretty strong, but I think, and I always forget the math for stuff like this, uh, that I don't think it can penetrate through like really thick armor. So you get something like five layers of metal or something like that, I don't think you can get through that. I forget what the heat penetration metric is. Okay, all right, right, right. What? How far the shape charge can put each reduces metric by square root of armor value. Uh, square root of armor 15 is three. Square root of 15 is something like three. Yeah, so this one can't get through five meters of metal or and eight, so in a, or can't get through two layers of heavy armor. I think. I think, I think. In any case, so, yeah, these are uh, reasonably... They're okay. They're a good addition, I feel. Medium ones, naturally a bit stronger. Slightly better penetration metric. The frag damage is what really does it for missiles. It just hops between... Hops past one layer of armor, and, like, uh, destroys things on the other side. And the large missiles, naturally, Lots of damage. So 24 fragments of heat, and like this one does almost 8,000 uh, damage per fragment. That does a lot, and it has a penetration metric of 20, which is as about as much as you'd ever need in a sensible universe. 
And so you'll notice that all these things are, are the same, and they use remote guidance because that shape charge goes on the front. That's the only place it can go, which is very good for balance, because if you, you can imagine if you stuck uh, heat missiles, if you could use heat with things like radar guided or infrared missiles, that would just be, that would just be ridiculous. You could spam them uh, with reckless abandon, and uh, the game would be too easy slash too hard. Because uh, if you use them too easy, and if they're used against you, that would make you cry, and that's no good. Uh, let's fire these things. I love the new missile sounds, it's so nice. So here they go, and uh, they don't instigate the Marauder, which is probably a sign that these uh, missiles aren't... Whoa, okay. Managed to blow up an ammo compartment, it looks like. Or rather, I think that's the large missiles that did that. So yeah, they're uh, they're pretty good. They don't feel OP, although give me some time, I'll figure out a way to make them ridiculous. Yeah, they are really good at just uh, getting sneaking past and blowing up uh, important components. And the fact that the, your remote guidance is one of the better things to use them with is both a blessing and a curse, although these, these missiles have lousy uh, turn rates, so that's probably one of the reasons why they're missing. So yeah, that's heat missiles pretty much. I just want to show off uh, what happens if you do this at a trebuchet because that's hilarious and fun. Trebuchet is uh, only slightly less dangerous than it used to be, by the way, because its fire rate is uh, considerably less. God mode is so nice. But its shells are even faster, and because it uses stacked uh, high explosives, let's zoom in these shells. That's a lot of explosives. They, these shells uh, actually do way more damage than they used to, simply because there's no uh, stacking penalty on them. Uh, that's a major feature of the APS update, in which means that larger, fewer shells that are more accurate and fired less often are, in some cases, better than small shells uh, fired more quickly, which was a major issue with uh, advanced cannons before. It was better to fire a hundred uh, single high explosive warheads uh, very quickly rather than say chucking 10 uh, stacked warheads like every like less often so I like this change this is a good change and it means that well the trebuchet is almost as annoying as it was before without feeling like complete nonsense and that's where heat missiles come in really handy is because uh, they can just gently reach past multiple layers of metal and explode vulnerable components. And that reminds me of something that's actually quite important. Like, you'll notice that these things, they've got remote guidance, but they're kind of hitting all over the place. That is because, and we'll just hop away from the action for a second. God, I love God Mode. Like, why did it take so long? Oh, dear. Okay, you... Okay, you actually need to stop that. You know, you're distracting. Okay, so I've mentioned this before, but uh, the aim point selection, I'm pretty sure we're going to get uh, extra options on here because it doesn't make sense otherwise. Uh, because the, as I said before, targeting AI and ammo is now no longer a thing. It's like, it's been removed from the game and I just want to raise my hands and praise the devs for that decision because... I had a real love-hate relationship with that particular feature because on the one hand it made design and craft very easy, you just stick all the vulnerable, uh, you stick the AI and ammo in the rear, everything else at the front, and you just concentrate defense around your ammo and AI and it made things very simple. On the other hand, that always felt really cheesy and a lot of the craft I built, uh, particularly the uh, uh, super atmospheric uh, bombers that I have, things like... Uh, what, what are they called? Things like the Orcanus, things like the Nazum, and things like that. They rely way too much on that. Just uh, flying in a tight circle while enemies uh, fruitlessly shoot at their backside. So that was not cool. And that's gone now. And that's awesome because it means that you need to... It's kind of... Uh, you, we're, we're all going to have to kind of rethink the way we design our ships. And we'll design our anything really. Aimpoint spoofing is no longer a factor, which means that you need to protect your whole craft a lot better than you did before. And the best thing now, at least as far as I'm aware, 
is now you have to stick your ammunition and AI in the strongest part of your craft, rather than in the part that is hardest to hit. So you're actually going to have to design, uh, in particular your ships, a lot more like how real life ships are designed, which uh, is... Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong about this, by the way. They tend to have the ammunition below the waterline, and they tend to have it in the center of the craft, where you can stack uh, the most uh, armor and the most active defense. So, yeah, that's a welcome change. So, I love that. That's really cool. And what else was I going to say? Okay, so we've seen the heat missiles and how they uh, blow things up. Uh, on to something else. And this is... a. Uh, this is something I'm very fond of, and it's just, I wasn't aware of this until I read the patch notes. And that is, is that crams now have extra tooltips. Like, oh yeah, APS is a lot more expensive now. Much more expensive. The Star Slung has jumped in price from about 400,000 materials, or 450,000, to over 500,000. So, that's due entirely uh, to this 200mm uh, triple gun. Uh, right here, which I'm gonna have to completely redesign, but that's the ball game with updates. It also looks kind of ugly, so I probably should do that anyway. Where was I? Oh yeah, so crams. Uh, yeah, new lengthy, lengthier barrels for the style sunk, by the way. <laughs> uh, these have a tooltip. You'll notice uh, down at the bottom, there's a whole lot of the usual information. Pivot barrel? What? Wh what? Has this been renamed? Barrel? Pivot barrel? Barrel? Huh, okay. What? Is it got the... Huh, interesting. I don't know why the motor-driven barrels are being called pivot barrels right here. I actually hope that they get a an aesthetic upgrade because, like, I don't know, crams... I've noticed they kind of look kind of ugly compared to APS uh, these days. Anyway, got, sorry, I got sidetracked. So, you'll notice down there, stats at minimum reload time. This is a very handy feature because it's like missiles, it's like advanced cannons, crams have now got the same love, and you get the... Wait a minute. Do do do. I think... Have, have fragment... Have cram fragments been buffed? I don't know, I should probably check that. Any case, so... You'll see now the overall firepower of the thing, which is just, I guess, the kind of DPS level. The shell power, the kinetic damage, the explosive damage, and the fragments of this uh, of this whole thing. And you can just tell that at a glance. And you can see here that uh, all these guns here have slightly different stats. Because uh, I'm lazy when it comes to designing crams, and I don't actually mind if they do slightly different things. That's weird though, that's radically different. But yeah, so that's a very welcome change. It makes uh, designing crams even easier. And for those of you who are like still kind of shell shocked from the advanced cannon changes, this is a good opportunity to learn cram cannons because if you kind of get used to like one of the reasons why the slow reload speed of advanced cannons now doesn't bother me is because I'm used to crams. These things fire really slowly. I mean, the style slung uh, these guns have a 20 second reload time, so, like, really, I don't mind, like, at all, because I've seen, I've seen how slow the game can get. Any case, uh, moving on, what was I talking about? Oh yes, yeah, so, turning off the star sound completely, uh, there's other sounds that have been added, so munition warners have a sound, I'm slightly less cool with it because it's slightly annoying, so, if we go, let's spawn in something that spits out a lot of missiles, where are you? Over here! Moon's nest. So, we should be able to hear these things go beep, beep, beep. Huh. Oh, yeah. There we go. So that's the missile warning sound, which I'm kind cool. So 
So it's probably hearing the torpedoes right now. And let's uh, spawn in something with an advanced cannon. Where is our friend? Uh, we need something with a good advanced cannon thing. Big heavy advanced cannon. Uh, yeah, our friend the trebuchet. The trebuska. That's not how you pronounce trebuchet at all, by the way. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. That's the advanced cannon sound. And the good news is, is that uh, lambs still are okay, uh, for the most part, against advanced cannons. They're not as good as they once were, because that's another thing I should mention, is that uh, I have uh, seen people be worried that uh, APS will be crippled due to uh, having low, such low fire rates that lambs will pop them easily. That's not the case. Um, uh, lambs, uh, well, uh, large APS shells have a lot more health than they used to, so they can get through it. Okay, while you're in god mode, uh, fire back. So god mode is just... This gun does sound awesome, though. And then it doesn't say anything. Wee, you're dead. I'm clearly distracted now. Ah, oh, the... I'm feeling enthusiastic, guys. It might be the excitement of the new update, or it might be the two cups of coffee I've just had in a row. Maybe both. Fire for daddy, come on. Oh, you're not firing. There you go. Oh yeah, 200 millimeter advanced cannon sounds so good. It's really nice. Mmm, yummy. Okay, well, what was I talking about? The next thing. Oh yes, I should mention something, and it's something important. So, as most of you probably know, and most of you probably feel this, uh, well, no, I still don't want to say most of you, a lot of you probably feel the same way. Uh, shields have, uh, have been nerfed into oblivion, which uh, on the one hand is good because uh, they were overpowered. On the other hand, uh, it means that they're kind of useless at the moment. Like, they have strength 5 shield on the 12 to 25% chance uh, to ricochet projectiles. So, as far as I'm concerned, like, I didn't like using shields anyway, so it's not really that much of a problem for me. But, uh, yeah, they're not really worth it unless you have absolutely uh, nothing better to do. Let's turn this off so we can actually see the power use. Okay, oh yeah, shield protectors. I don't know why that- that's a really annoying thing. Shield protectors don't work if there are shield rings on the vehicle. Have it your way. Have it your way. I will have to do it uh, like this. Like this, I say. Where is it? There. Uh, there. So, should be larger than 111, okay. Do, do, and ay 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 ay. Nothing in life is easy. Nothing in life is easy. I'm going to make the ugliest uh, little thing in the world here, just to make my life easier. And where is the Okay, so, here we go, so, where we are, sync 5, lousy percentage chances, blah blah blah, and still uses a lot of power, if I, this is a tiny tiny shield, uh, with tiny tiny range, uh, okay, whoa, that's actually, hmm, let's do this. So yeah, 700 uh, power for a strength 10 shield at maximum size, that only has... Uh, strength, like, just a one meter range. That's less than ideal. Uh, God. So yeah, but, uh, pff, I forgot about the thing that I was going to talk about. For real. Shields are cheaper, so they're considerably less useful than they once were, and so they are 100 materials cheaper. That doesn't make much of a difference as far as I'm concerned, because that's it's 200 materials for a single block. 
is still very expensive. And honestly, 200 uh, materials. Let's see here. You can get what can you get for 200 materials? You can get you can get 10 metal beams for that, which honestly might do a we're probably going to do a better job than a shield generator anyway. But there we go. The one thing that I really like most of the shield uh, debate is basically over. This is how they're going to be for the most part, I believe. But the one thing I would like, and I don't know if this is ever going to happen, is get this size restriction off. Like, I really want shields to be able to... Like, you just stick one shield, like, on each side of your ship, and you just crank this up to whatever the width, height, and length of your ship is. That'd be so nice, because I hate placing uh, many shields. It's just, they're still fiddly to set up. They're still fiddly and, like, I don't know. And that's not just me being lazy, they're not fun to use. And this is a video game. If there's a thing in the game that isn't fun to use, then why is it there? But in any case, that's enough uh, dumping on shields. We're gonna go to the main menu now. And we're going to uh, look at the last thing that's uh, an important feature of this new update. And that is story missions. They are now uh, being... Uh, upgraded a bit. I never realized that this is what the Deepwater Guard emblem is. That's kind of freaky. And the Steel Striders one is actually quite, uh, quite awesome. So, just while we're here, let's have a look. So, let's go here. We have the Pensive Pigeon. I don't want to drive this. I really don't. Okay, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Da 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 Okay, so we got a... haven't modified your loadout, okay. I can't remember what uh, things I have that are... Oh well, let's see how badly I do. I cannot drive for peanuts, by the way. I need to... Uh, oh, goodness me. This thing has no AI, so... Let's pull up. Oh, Jay. Ah, God. Okay, so, nope, the other one. Uh, Jay, you is a go here. And, ah, nope, Jay, Jay, Jay. There we go. And control is fire. I don't know if this is gonna work very well. Yay. Did I do it? Probably. Okay, so as I just uh, probably sail off into space right now, uh, I'm going to leave it there. So, story missions are still kind of under construction, so yeah, look forward to that. But yeah, this update is, I mostly like it. It's pretty good, apart from the shields, but I never liked shields to begin with, so yeah, that's, that's kind of that, really. Okay, so that's basically it. So, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to my current Patreon supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Am I going to crash into the ocean right now? Nope, I'm doing loop-de-loops. Whee! Did I drop more bombs? I don't know if I did. Oh well. Farewell!